Hey everybody, Brendan here. Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be continuing our speedruns, and it looks like we are getting a Dragon Sicilian today. So against Bishop C4, I'm just going to be playing G6, and we will go into a normal um, Dragon position if they choose to go for D4. They're not choosing to. Um, they're going for whatever this is. So I'm just going to play normally with E6. And now I like I like kicking the knight away with h6, but I also like knight e7 as well. Um, I'm wondering if I have to kick it away. Because the thing is, um, if I go knight e7, which is something I kind of want to do in these positions, then uh, queen f3 could be annoying. Castles, queen h3, something like this. I could go h6, but when I go back, there's all of a sudden some targets. Um, I doubt it's much of an issue, regardless. Yeah, I'll, I'll go h6. I'll go h6. Normally, I don't make those types of moves, but I, I kind of like it here. Uh, again, it's mainly because, well, I, I'm not exactly sure what the consequences of knight e7 will be, and I'm not sure if I want to test it. Um, so, just playing normally with things like knight e7, uh, feel pretty comfortable. And if they try something like bishop e3, castles, uh, well, I can't really castle there, I have to play um, uh, d6, because my, my c5 pawn will be hanging. Um, interesting. So I'll just keep attacking this guy. And I can add another attacker if I want to with queen c7. But they might be banking on the idea of uh, bishop f4. But then I have g5, g4, for example. Uh, or g5, knight g6, which I like a little bit more. So let's go queen c7. They're going to probably go bishop f4. And I'll go g5 and uh, knight g6 here. And I think we just win the pawn. So I'm quite happy with that. Uh, the other good thing about it is whenever they take with the knight, I can take with the bishop and kind of force that trade. Let's go... Do I take immediately... Do I have to worry about any knight e4, knight b5 business? Knight b5, I can always meet with queen b8 here. Calculation is important. I like a6 quite a bit. I think it's an important move to add because it also threatens moves like, uh, like b5, just getting extra space, which is really nice. I don't really think that's a harmful thing to do. And now I think it's time to take. I could be wrong on this, but it does feel correct. We could also go b5 here. Let's take the pawn. I think generally we should be materially minded when we can be. Um, I'm really struggling to see how this gets punished. Sure, they can bring a rook to e1, uh, but we always have d6. And unfortunately for them, what I'm noticing with d6 is whenever they take and we take back, let's just say for the, uh, for example, with the knight, which I would do with the knight that time around, is um, we have more pieces covering that square, so we never even have to take with the pawn, which is a very comfortable thing to be able to say. Yeah, um, so there's d5 here. Let's play it. They may end up taking on e5, but I think what I'll do there is I'll take with the knight. And it's important to take with the knight there than the bishop, because then they have knight f6 check. 
uh, otherwise, which kind of saves things at least a little bit. Uh, it, it muddies the waters for sure. Um, we should just be able to take this without any problems. If they take c5, I'm just going to castle. Get out of any trouble. That's my guess of what will happen in the position. Is is that actually the best idea, though, of takes, queen takes instead? Because now, if they take somehow, I could just castle then. And I think that might be better, because then it gets me out of the pin. Whereas if they take on c5 and I castle, they have d4, right? Yeah. Um, so we have to be a little bit careful there. We are up a piece. And uh, it would be nice to stay up a piece if possible. So we have to make sure we're playing with at least a little bit of accuracy in mind. I like bishop, bishop? I like bishop e6. Um, attacking or covering the d5 square. And then we could castle long maybe. Could be safer. Uh, let's see here. So defense right now, right? If we look, we have one, two, three pieces defending. They have one, two, three pieces attacking. So uh, if they can add another attacker somehow, we could be in trouble. Luckily, I think we're fine. Um, as long as we have the move F6, which we do, which is nice. Um, there's also this move F5. So if rookie won, then I can just go f4. Um, but I think bishop e6 is actually a really smart move. It's hard to play this move, though, but... Um, it does feel like the right one. And the reason why is not just because of moves like long castles, uh, but also, again, f6 would be nice. We could still short castle. Covering d5 is just such a big thing for us that I, I think it just gets rid of any initiative that they might have had. Um, so I'll take. Pretty happily, I'll take. Um... Is it time for... I think it's time for a queen to c4. Now, they can take on e6 or take on e5, something like this. But uh, at the end of the day, I'm threatening a queen trade right now. And I don't think they want to allow it. Um, so I'm quite happy here. Now, one thing we do have to worry about a little bit after queen to c4 is, for example, let's say queen to e3 is played. Um, e6 is hanging over our heads. So addressing that could be a very good idea. Um, no, they just go into this immediately. But I don't think this w works. Does it work? Oh, maybe it does work. I was thinking that we could take on e2, but they can take on g7. I was thinking knight c7 check, and then we could just go king d7. That's not a problem. But maybe we should just take on e4. Wow, okay. Or e6, my apologies. Yeah, let's take on e6. Funnily enough, I still think this is fine. Though the position has definitely changed a little bit. Um, probably the best thing to do is to castle. Um, but which way? Something that gets out of this pin, because now they're trying to threaten to take somehow. So I like castling long. A little sketchy, but, um, I'm also... 
having difficulty finding the problem with it. Actually, wait, there might be a stronger move here with queen g4. Because if they take on e5, well, we just win this pawn, right? Or we just win the queen. And if instead they take, and then we get to take with the knight, well, we can always defend this with something like king to f7. Um, so we're never really scared there. I think queen to g4 is the way to go. This just forces the queen trade. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think this actually solidifies the game. And now we should be winning quite comfortably. So that's good. We are happy. Is there anything else to worry about? I don't think so. The second queens are off the board, our king is no longer weak. Um, and that's something we're just over the moon about. Rook e1, just king f7. Just get out of this pin so there's no problems with them taking d5. If they end up taking d5 anyways, for some reason, uh, then I, I just take back and yeah, just bring my knight to f6 not really a problem i i could have also taken on c3 i i guess and maybe that's the move here because we're attacking the rook so they don't really have a choice if they take our knight then it doesn't really work out for them and yeah um excellent position now we are just going to bring our rooks to the c file they have double isolated pawns on the c file and we can defend e6 at the same time as attacking. Actually, maybe the better idea is to bring it to c4, the rook, because then we can bring this rook to c6. So we can defend um, with the the less passive rook. Instead of having a rook on c8, it's on c6. If you can imagine both rooks here, then that would be pretty nice. So let's bring this rook over. If they go rook b4, there's always moves like b5. Um, let's go rook c6 uh, now rook c4 isn't really as possible right so not gonna worry about it we'll just bring the rooks in um I wouldn't mind keeping some pawns on the board with uh, g4 here. And the reason why I love g4 so much is I'm just going to reroute this knight to f5. And this bishop's kind of just out of the game. It's not doing anything. Uh, maybe it could go to h4. So it could be a good idea to go for something like h5, h4 first, and then making this maneuver. Um, or they're playing in the way that they do now. And we can just go h5. If they end up going rook h1, I can still go h4. Because if they try taking, thinking that there's a pin here, unfortunately, my knight is defending. So uh, rook h1 would not work. Instead, now we have an open h file to work with as well, which is nice. f5 doesn't do anything, as we can take it. And I don't see anything that they can do about that. It ends up getting played, but we just have too good of a defense going on here. Yeah. Um, now I actually like this move, king e6. Because if they ever try to give a check on the open file here, we just go knight e4. And uh, yeah, the pressure is just increasing ever so slowly, but surely, which is important. I don't see a reason to give up this h file, so I'm a little bit hesitant to play something like rook to c8. We also have to be careful. We're not threatening this pawn yet because they have rook takes e4 with check. And uh, after we recapture, we would lose our, our rook there. We would just be losing a piece, and we probably still have a winning advantage, but not really worth it. It would uh, take a lot more time. Okay, so rook e3. Now we have f4 if we wanted to try it. f4 is nice because if they try taking, we take back. They take, we can go king f4, and we're actually winning uh, two pieces, not just one. So let's play f4. We'll take that. And 
And of course, we capture here and play king f5, and uh, this game is over now. Yeah. Good game. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about what went on here. Um, and again, I'm going to leave the lines off, but I'm going to leave the evaluation on so you can make sure I'm on the right track and we'll figure this out together. Okay. So, um, yeah, already after bishop c4, generally as a dragon player, you're in a tough spot because you have the opportunity to go for e6, which is going to be the better move here. Um, but at the same time, uh, a lot of people that may play these um, these types of positions may not want to do that. I think knight f6 is also fine as well with the idea of e5 and d5. Um, and and uh, you're usually doing pretty okay here. You're not re you're never really scared of this uh, because they just like help you develop. No matter how they take, you're just getting a lot of development and you're ready to castle. Even though your king's a little bit weak, it's it's nothing. Uh, this is actually an excellent version of a dragon if you think about it. Um, so yeah, we're in, we're in a tough spot where we're going to just allow them to transpose into Yugoslav types of positions. And yeah, this knight g5 is just a waste of time. Uh, you should never really be scared of bishop c4 and knight f3, g5 uh, types of maneuvers. You just play e6, attack the knight, and uh, what they'll likely do is play something like d3 or even just bring the piece back. But no matter what, it's kind of something they don't want to do. Now, I don't know if h6 was really the best idea. It seems to be okay. Knight e7 was also quite reasonable, but I don't know if there's any silly business here, for example. Uh, after h6, knight f3, king h7. Um, this looks quite good, and it looks like there actually might be better. Probably d5 is better here. Um, but this this could get really messy. Uh, really, really quickly, actually. So, obviously they can't take back. That would be a massive blunder. But there could be something like bishop takes h5, or h3, uh, giving up the bishop and knight g5. I've seen so many positions like this where it's like it's clear that black's winning, but somehow there's just so much so much counterplay uh, for white, uh, like these uh, Grand Prix styles attack styles of attack. So uh, yeah, I wasn't sure, so I just kicked the knight. That's why I did it. And um, e5 was a bit premature, I believe, because we could probably play something like uh, d6 or d5 even. Um, and just kind of chip away at their center. I think something like this should be fine as well. Uh, it does give an advantage, not as big of one, but it's definitely playable. Yeah, but knight c6, of course, now the pawn's a bit weak. If they could play something like f4, then it's not as bad, but unfortunately, after g5 and knight g6, I just struggle, how, uh, struggle to see how they keep the pawn. Um, yeah, a6, just normal stuff, uh, just prophylactic like the the pawn's not really going anywhere immediately so there's no reason to take it if we take it and allow knight b5 i'm sure we're fine here but again it's just not not something we need to allow uh so a6 is is just a useful move because then we also have moves like b5 b4 coming so it just helps us all around and uh i think around here there was a point uh, to mention where uh, after knight e4, for example, after d5, if we take with the bishop here, which should still be fine, there's like knight f6 stuff, kind of. Like, they're still losing a piece, but that's why I wanted to take with the knight if they ever took on e5, uh, which is something I mentioned. And it actually turns out this is a, a... No, it's not a worse move. Okay, never mind. For a second, I thought it was saying it was much, much worse, but uh, it looks like it's totally fine as well. Anyways, yeah, uh, bishop e6. Uh, no reason not to protect the, the central pawn. Uh, allowing something like knight to d5, not worth it. And now, again, it's just a matter of can we get rid of uh, this awkward pin. And it's pretty easy to do. I think queen c4 works totally fine here. Uh, knight e6 was a nice move. The problem is, if you play queen e2, now there's knight to uh, g7, and after king to f8, uh, they can end up taking. And all of a sudden, 
they win d5 and you're actually in a lot of trouble here as black um what i was looking at was knight c7 which doesn't work because now we can play uh king to d7 they have to recapture but unfortunately we're able to take on c7 and uh this this wins us the game so they can't do that but all right uh f takes e6 and queen g4 and yeah the game's just done at this point and it's all just a matter of technique which again when you're uh up a piece in positions like this all you got to do is trade down make sure you don't really allow any crazy tactics keep the position as dry as possible that might not sound fun uh but it's a it's a really 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 surefire way to just win these uh, types of games and again as you see just slight improvements of the pieces taking anything that they give me uh but of course being mindful of that and game's just over so uh hopefully you guys enjoyed that one I will see you tomorrow with a, another video. All right. Bye, guys.